Hello, all. congrats on the win. Um, Coach, my question will be for you, kind of a two-parter. First, what was your message to the team at the end of the first, everything you could repeat that is? And um, it felt like Courtney Mandersloop was all over the floor defensively, particularly in the second period. How did Courtney's defense and ability to cover all areas of the floor change the course in this game? Yeah, uh, it was great to have Slutty back out of the court. I thought she had a really solid game to have, uh, you know, it's scoring seven, seven points, seven assists, zero turnovers. But we know what she can do de defensively. Just her activity, she seems to be everywhere. She's getting hands on balls as well. And um, yeah, she, uh, you know, obviously, I don't even think she was too tired. That was my only concern there. But um, it was certainly great to have her back there. Yeah, we started slow, uh, you know. A little bit rusty, I suppose. So we had to we had to dig deep. We had to get back to playing um, as hard as we can uh, and, and, and playing in the right way. We didn't make many shots in that start in the first half, and we got some open ones, but we just you know had to keep moving the ball and, and make sure the high percentage ones, and they started to drop when we needed them. Appreciate that. So for you, hi. Question for anybody. Uh, first half, Atlanta shot 13 of 18 in the paint, but in the second half, just five of 14. We saw some more double teams. We saw some extra activity. What adjustments were you able to make in that second half to live with them around the paint? I think just um, knowing where they're trying to put the ball. You know, they're trying to drop down the middle. They're trying to punch it into the paint. Um, and really putting two to, to any of the post-ups because, um, you know, they were just trying to score. And uh, just being conscious of that, I think that in, in the start we weren't as disruptive as we wanted to be and we were able to uh, turn that around in the second and then for the rest of the team. Uh, so a uh, question for you. Uh, today you competed against Tina Charles, an interesting story there of two New Yorkers that went to UConn and now played for the New York at one point respective careers. How important do you think matchups are like that are for the younger generation that we see you and see Tina and say, I want to do that in the future? Yeah. I mean, I hope... Um, it's really important. I think that uh, Tina is a legend in, in everything that she's done, everywhere, high school, college, um, WNBA, like USA basketball. So um, for us to, to kind of compete against each other, you know, you know, she's obviously like a little bit older than me. Um, hopefully it, it just continues the pipeline, whether you're a UConn player or not, like wanting to play against someone that you've looked up to, that you followed since you were um, younger. Uh, hey Sandy, my question was just about JJ. Uh, obviously, defense, starting the paint, all there, but just <coughs> over, you know, shot attempts and points. Do you think, as it was in the cup, was just that game flow or what they were doing? You know, kind of your take on that. Yeah, I thought they were really active in the paint. Um, JJ was, you know, feel a little bit under the weather, so uh, we'll give her a little grace in that regard. But I think she found some energy in that second half, and that helped us. That's what we needed. Um, you know, really big body there and being active and the rebounding, and you know, sometimes. You know, sometimes players, it's more like, okay, things are not going well for me. I'm not scoring, but there's more than scoring. And I think JJ helped us be successful by setting screens and the rolling. Uh, she made a big three for us there too, but playing it the right way. Uh, and that's, that's always critical. It's not about how many shots they take for me. It's uh, as long as we're playing in the right way, we've got enough depth to cover everything. I'm by um, Sandy. Towards the end of the first half, you ran the lineup of Sloop, Leo, KB, B, and Stewie. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the first time you've ran that combination all season. Just what do you think worked really well about that pairing, and how do you think you can sort of like, sort of like take that lineup and get in the future? Yeah, look, I think at that stage we're struggling a little bit, and we were trying so many different rotations out there to get some energy here. We had a 9 0 run right at that stage, so it was a great lineup for us. Uh, it allowed us to get some momentum going into that half court. So, you know, every day we don't predetermine how we're going to rotate, but they kind of know when they're coming in, and then we make decisions as on the fly with, you know, what's working best for us against our opponent on, a, on that day, and that was, was a solid lineup for us. Uh, my question is for Brianna. Um, you had a pretty good game today. Just what did you see out there that you could exploit? Um, just being aggressive, you know, knowing that uh, for the majority of the game, I had um, like two centers guarding me. Uh, so attacking off the perimeter, um, anything that I can get in transition because that's where, you know, they're not kind of clogged with the paint and things like that. But uh, yeah, being aggressive, knowing that some of our teammates were a little bit under the weather and making sure that no matter what, you know, it's our next use for, for us um, and we continue to get this win and defend them for me. Jerry. Um, this is for both of the players. I'm curious how both of you were able to use your voice and your leadership ability 
on this team to help the group to be able to refocus and, and in the latter three quarters hold the dream to less than 20 points after that first quarter? Trisha should pull the two of you there. What's his name be? Okay, this is Karis. Karis. Yeah, he doesn't. Um, I think just, you know, while we're out there, we were able to see kind of what was going on, the things that we needed to pick up on, and just making sure that we were, vo that we were vocalizing that so that way we could, you know, um, do the things that we needed to do. And Stewie for you as well. Um, <clears throat> like not overreacting. Atlanta has, you know, played a game, what, what's it, Saturday? They played a game Thursday, like they're in a better game rhythm than us. Um, because, you know, it was nice for us to have those two days off, but also you know play games and, and getting back was that. So uh, that first quarter like, wasn't a surprise. And, and I think it's just like, all right, now we have to kind of get ourselves out of this hole. We wanted to, to cut it to under 10 before halftime when we did that. Uh, and then you knew the second half would be ready to vote. Hey, this is one of the players. Um, in the second quarter, it seemed that it was a little bit of a shift to make to a 25 to four front going into the third and taking the lead. Uh, what kind of, what was that shift? What changed on your end to kind of only lane like thing? Um, I think we were more disruptive def defensively. It didn't matter who was matched up. You know, sometimes Luke ended up like um, Tina or Shania Parker, and she continued to fight and uh, battle her way, her way out of it. Uh, and that led to us getting our transition offensively, um, just just kind of like getting downhill. And whether it was just a drive, you take or finish, um, I think that was good for us. And then say the first time they borrowed money, you had to start us back just for reaching the lot. Yeah, no, it was good to have uh, the whole team back. Now it makes obviously rotations a little harder, but I thought um, I thought on the players it was good to. You know, we've been playing so well, and to add me and that, that gave us a lot. That was a luxury to have to give Slutty. Uh, that was a luxury. We had 25 assists, and we had great activity. Um, yeah, I mean, it's we got we got a little bit more depth back on the bench now, and um, probably still we had to play in big minutes, but at least some of them weren't as high as they used to be. Hey, hey, Stu, we talked about turnovers before being, you know, when they were an issue. Talk about maybe pacing being a, a big case uh, of that. What did you see today, obviously, with the lower turnover number today? I mean, I think uh, just being smarter. Sometimes, you know, obviously we came off big turnover game against many, um, and being aware of that. I think sometimes we want to make, like, we want to make the right pass, and sometimes, or sometimes it's like the cross-court pass, and um, knowing when to just, like, keep it and, and run, run through a play or run something like that. Um, because I feel like most of our turnovers are, are because we're really trying to get our teammate open, um, and sometimes we can get them off through, through a different play where we don't watch it. Phil Oxy Davis. Uh, Sandy, Leo came off the bench today, 12 points and a couple of really timely steals. Uh, just wondering what you saw from her today that you really liked. Yeah, before we get into that, I have to make one point. You mentioned about Stewie having a pretty good game. I mean, she had a great game today, but it's also, she's the first player ever to, to get to 5,000 points. I mean, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? Um, champion here, so I mean, I just want to make sure you guys all knew that in case you didn't. Um, but yeah, that's the fastest. The fastest. The fastest. So the fastest. I meant the fastest. Jeez. Did I say the first? Not the first. Diana's uh, made about the energy points she <laughs> I've got a few more years to catch up to her. But yeah, that was pretty impressive. But getting back to Leo, I mean, she was solid. That's why she was on the floor at the end of the game. Um, her size, her versatility, and um, she got those critical steals for us. Uh, she made, she didn't just make shots, she created shots. I know she got big, you know, great shot in, um, in the corner for us, which was massive for us. Uh, she continues to grow, and it's fun. This is still a young player, uh, uh, still getting used to the chemistry of these players and playing alongside her, but I love the confidence and the toughness that she brings to us. So what version of Bridget? Well, Sandy, you read my mind because I was going to ask Siri about that. So. Okay, well, good job. You can ask her now, so I understand that. She was the uh, fastest. The fastest. Did you fastest. Fastest. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, Siri, how does that feel? You passed like Ed Ross, you didn't get here. Um, what does that feel like? <laughs> um, no, but you talk. <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's, it's a cool um, honor for sure, obviously. 
um, when you're able to kind of pass someone like D, who's really paving the way with the scoring and, and all of that, um, it's an incredible honor and also something that I'll definitely text her about. Um, but, but all in all, like I wouldn't be able to be here and do all the things without my teammates and, and really appreciate them continually uh, setting me up to get to this point. But um, we're trying to do more than just I get accolades. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.